Gamescom is back. For over a decade, thousands have gathered for this world-renowned convention in Cologne, Germany to celebrate the latest news and releases from developers across the globe. Gaming is that one thing that brings everything together, and Gamescom is the biggest show on earth to do it. It's more than a tradition, it is really an essential part of gaming culture in Europe and in Germany. Last year, with the global pandemic putting a halt to all conventions in a conventional sense, Gamescom and IGN rose to the challenge to create a fun and safe way for fans to celebrate video games. But for 2021, it became clear that we had to do it even bigger and even better. It's basically an all hands on deck, like all aboard scenario. We had to build everything from scratch. Our sets were built from scratch. Our control centers are all built from scratch. It was always going to be an enormous challenge, but we believe our gaming community deserves this now more than ever. The mission of Gamescom has always been to bring together the entire games community. This is how we made Gamescom 2021 for you. My name is Dan Parkhurst. I'm an executive producer for uh, productions here at IGN, meaning I'm uh, one of the people overseeing uh, all events, including Gamescom. Gamescom is special in the fact that it brings a lot of people together from all over the world, and it's a very different experience than other events because it's so much more global. And in having that sort of connection with folks in Germany, there's folks in the UK, folks across the pond, there's people in Australia and other parts of the world that we get to work with, and being able to work closely with them um, is is really cool and it sort of shows how uh, how global gaming is. My name is Tina Amini and I'm the editor-in-chief of IGN. One of the other really special things about Gamescom is just the accessibility, the inclusivity, and it's very exciting that there's this big push for a lot of indie representation as well, which you'll see on our awesome indie showcase and more. Gamescom is the place to be for indie devs. Like, we always have the hottest new game demos, the best lineup, and also the most attention for our devs. Gamescom is the consumer business highlight of the indie here. Hey, I'm Corrado Corrado. I'm the director of video at IGN. I'm also one of the executive producers uh, for Gamescom. The pandemic is still just not going away. And I think that now more than ever, gaming is super important. And an event like Gamescom is an opportunity for the industry to keep the trailers that are coming out normalized, keep the console life cycles normalized. Like every time there's an opening night live or an event like that, and you have a slew of new like game titles that are announced that gives us something to look forward to. To get Gamescom off the ground, it all starts in Germany, where teams had to figure out how to put on its second pandemic showcase. I'm Chris. I'm the head of Gamescom at GAME, the German Video Games Association. We work very hard to preserve the interests of our members, the 350 large to small game companies and creator agencies and other media outlets when it comes to Gamescom. My name is Sonja Hennig, and I'm a product manager for the digital hub Gamescom now at Köln. I started working last December and it was in the middle of the pandemic. So you can imagine how it was. It was pretty challenging. And we had plenty of hours with team calls, team sessions, shared desk sessions. So it was challenging, but like I said, we made the best out of it. I'm Michael Obermeier and I'm this year's lead host for the German edition of Gamescom Studio. While we're sad that we can't welcome you all to Germany this year, we're still bringing three days of awesome games and that warm fuzzy feeling of a global gaming community directly to you. To make that all happen, our team of more than 30 people worked tirelessly for months. I think we had about 4 billion meetings, but in the end we got every big AAA blockbuster, every indie game and everything in between to appear on our shows. Every year, one of the other biggest challenges is that we're working with so many talented developers and it's a lot of coordinating across time zones, across our own deadlines and across their own deadlines. And it's a lot that we have to work with and a lot to juggle to make sure that everything's coming together right down to the wire. Our learning from last year was that we needed to focus on online first and like an on a strong online concept first and see the physical attendance in 2021 as a nice to have. My name is Marianne Franzen and I am the technical director. Last year I was a freelancer, so I was able to just sneak in, sit down, everything was all set up for me and I was here for filming and then at the end of the show I left. About a month later I got hired with IGN and so now I'm here uh, back a year later to set everything up this time. Hi there everyone, I'm gonna lose this. I I'm Mr. Michael Swaim. I'm a manager of video content for IGN and a regular contributor. You'll see me hosting stuff, 
writing stuff, editing videos, sort of all around. So last year being what it was, it was really a trial by fire. We had like hours and hours of programming and we just wanted the people at home to feel like they got the full experience and that was a lot of work. A big change this year has been just playing smarter, especially the slate of games we have this year. Honestly, I think 2021 is a little stronger slate than 2020, but as far as our coverage goes, I think we have the same great coverage, but more smartly deployed exactly where it matters. Last year, we were able to shoot some of the um, some, some of the show in studio, and that was really great. We didn't really have the ability to shoot live, and this year we're shooting stuff live. So what that allows for is us to have a larger, cooler sort of studio look for any of the reactive type stuff, like our ONL after show, stuff like Game Scoop, stuff like Next Gen Console Watch, to sort of give Gamescom this big feel that, that you get when you come into like something like Opening Night Live from Keeley and anything else. This year, we brought back all of the best event shows, Gamescom Studio, Awesome Indies, and of course, Opening Night Live, a diverse showcase of everything that gamers have to look forward to across all platforms and genres. We're really excited to be doing Opening Night Live uh, again this year. It, it's sort of the unofficial kickoff to the fall and holiday season of game releases. It's gonna be very similar to what we did last year, but scaling up the production to a larger stage, more on stage guests with lots of games, and hopefully just a big celebration of games. This year for Gamescom, we were really excited because the plan was to finally go back to Cologne, Germany and be live at the event and actually do it in person again. But just like last year, COVID had different plans. And just like last year, we had to sort of reinvent the wheel halfway through. In Los Angeles, IGN had outgrown its studio, but Gamescom was an opportunity to assemble an even more impressive new production space. Crews of hosts, producers, editors, camera and audio teams, and many more worked tirelessly from the Culver City offices to ensure the Gamescom experience would be state of the art. We actually have an arcade that was built into our new LA offices, and we walked in upon scouting and realized that it would be the perfect location to do interviews with developers and roundtable discussions and whatnot. Aside from hosting, you know, you see what we do. We're the talking head on camera. The rest of the time, we're just off frame typing furiously because a new email came in that says, it's not this game, it's this game. <laughs> to overcome the kind of challenges that COVID brings for production, it's just, it's all in the planning. We have a huge monitor wall. It's bigger than the one we had last year. It's curved. The desk is twice as big. We made sure that the room itself was bigger and the desk was bigger so that we could seat our hosts together, but like keep them distant sort of making sure that we were compliant with COVID and then figure out who needed to be in each room and how we jumped from one room to another live and how we took calls live and how we jumped from our LA studios to remote operations live and back. Half of it is preparation. The other half of it is nightmares that you then turn into action items and hope to God that you solve for them. So this year we have a home team and a remote team that are in touch with our team here. They'll be doing our podcast beyond. I'm helping put that show together and have it smoothly mix in with our live shows. We've had to figure out how to employ different switching software as well as the more traditional type of switching boards in order for us to figure out how to pipe in phone calls from Germany so that we can take them live. Back in Germany, Gamescom teams match those efforts with great success and their ability to organize and coordinate such a complex event shows why it's been going strong for 12 years with no signs of slowing down. To make the experience for everybody even better, we have completely redeveloped Gamescom now. For this, the team was expanded and we brought new development partners on board. That was an important step to offer the entire community the best possible experience. Our production team designed and set up multiple stages for Gamescom Studio with all the latest games and Gamescom Show, our primetime fun extravaganza. Quite a tall order under normal circumstances, but this year with the pandemic still going on, we had to make sure that all our production and studio environments are safe for everyone to work in. And so there are individual team members who are responsible for the different areas of Gamescom, for cosplay, esports, retro, indie, and many others, whether at Gamescom in Cologne or digitally on Gamescom Now.
With 2021 a rousing victory, all of our teams are excited to tackle the future of Gamescom. However, it couldn't be done without the generous support of our audiences. Coordinating games, guests, and getting everything ready just in time sure was challenging, but the team did an amazing job. People from different teams, different backgrounds, with a shared love for games coming together to make something cool. I think that's the spirit of Gamescom, and even though the work was quite stressful at times, we believe it's important to keep this spirit alive, even though there's not actually a convention happening in Cologne this year. It's super great to be on set. I very much missed it. It's nice to see all my co-workers again in person. Honestly, that's like my favorite part about Gamescom. We really want to bring people together. We want them to have a great time and we are going to do so in Cologne next year and online this year. With this second year of the pandemic, a lot of us are reckoning with effectively this still being a big part of our lives. And so we have to persevere and we have to figure out the healthy and safe ways of still getting to enjoy a lot of the things about life that we enjoy, one of them being video games. And as a wise man once said, life finds a way. Life uh, finds a way. This community is alive and thriving. Deep down, the people of this planet really do want to get along, take care of each other, live together, and most importantly, play together.